What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Dr. Will Rogers, a.k.a. Master Teacher 33. We're going to jump right in. Tonight is Sunday, September the 18th, 2022. Time is 845 Central. Tonight we want to talk about the premonition of reality. So in order to for reality to exist before reality exists, In order for you to have a feeling before the manifestation, we want to talk about, as we prepare for class tomorrow, with day one of Under Open Understanding Devour Plasmic Manifestation, which is another way of saying you creating your own bios, your bios or your biological operating system. So we all have a BIOS. Our BIOS, or operating system, is our bias. It is this BIOS that's based upon our own bias. Bias is something that is established with confirmational or confirmation bias. And confirmation bias is what allows us to be able to create the field. The only issue is when we create our fields, how is it done and is it us doing it? Usually a field is created by the dominant culture or whoever controls the narrative. And so tonight we're talking about what if you woke up every morning feeling wealthy while you was broke? What if you woke up every morning feeling healthy while you were sick? What if you woke up every morning feeling young while you was old? What if you woke up every morning feeling like a Harvard grad even though you was a high school dropout? What if, what if, what if, what if, what if you woke up every morning feeling like you was in a great relationship with your boo-boo and you were single. So today we get to establish the entire field of abundance, which simply means that feeling now, the ability to feel or the ability to act as if that's the whole secret, if you will, to the universe. The secret to the universe is for you to be able to control your field. And Excuse me, the way that we control the field is called the gate of God. And the gate of God allows us to access the throne of God. And so the ability for everybody to be able to access this gate or this passage is done through what we call focus. So focus is the ability for you to select which gate that you want to operate or open. And you do that, we all do that by how we place our intention and our attention, what we feel. So we bring about what we feel about. And so your job and my job is to try to just be cautious if we're veteran or aware of the field. Because if we're able to be aware of the field, then we create what is real. And to the degree that, and I talk about this all the time, and that's why these shows are so important, and I have a better understanding why all of my stuff is now being taken down off of all of my YouTube channels, and it's stuff that I did two to five years ago. And it's all been taken down due to the biological references that I'm making doing tomorrow's private show and what I'm doing every show, which is why I usually do the shows that deal with the bio field or your BIOS, which is the biological operating system, B-I-O-S, which is your BIOS, B-I-A-S. And so your confirmational BIOS, we all have it. So we don't really listen to learn. Most, if not all of us, we listen to confirm. We don't listen to learn, we listen to confirm. But it's unconscious. So I just want to make you conscious of 
the thalamus, the hypothalamus, the pituitary gland, and the pineal gland, which establishes that bridge between the left hemisphere of the brain and the right hemisphere of the brain, based upon the Harvard and the CIA documents that is called the hemiseat. But in biology, it's a matter intermedia, as I will be breaking down tomorrow night. And as we start this journey down the biological gate of God, which is the superconductive magnetic flux quantum state, that's just a fancy way of saying that your biological field of energy, which is your aura, which is your vibe, which is your energy. You walk into a room and everybody has a certain vibe. It's interesting that you can find a woman that's not very attractive, but she has a very sensual vibe. Then you can find a woman that is just knocked down, gorgeous, gorgeous, and she has a very butch or a very non-feminine vibe. And it's amazing to me that as I go through life and look into the biology behind some of the stuff that, you know, Dr. Bruce Lipton talks about all day and, you know, Dr. Dr. Joe Dispanzio, when they break down and get into some of the stuff with my boy Billy Carson and Jamie Blair, um, all of the greats who understand the thing that I understand, which has come to understanding how the bio field of energy is being mismanaged and misapplied because of epigenetics, which simply means we're not using the correct verbs, so we're not activating the correct nerves. So we're not sending out the correct vibe, so we're not creating the correct tribe. And so what I do is, to negate all of that, I force feed by using what I call focus, discipline, and order, which is why I've been teaching focus, discipline, and order for the last 20 years, because I understand that frequent, intense teaching creates frequent, intense thinking, which creates frequent, intense talking, which creates frequent, intense telling of the frequent intense task, which results in frequent intense tenacity, so that when you operate frequent and intense in time. So my intensity, because I'm in tense, so I'm not past tense, I'm not future tense, I'm present tense. So I live in the tense, I live in the moment. So I don't have to worry about the past or the future. I create the past and the future with the present. By simply meaning I just bulldoze with bulldog tenacity. And I refuse to confirm my biases. I only challenge my beliefs. And if I ask myself, like I do every day, why do you feel angry? If there isn't a justification for the anger, I stop feeling the anger. So I don't allow myself, I self-govern myself. So I don't do pity parties. I don't wait on Jesus. I'm not calling crypto dollar Joel Osteen. I don't need a Reverend or Dr. Bishop. It's great to have a friend or a coach or somebody that you can discuss matters with. But at the end of the day, it comes down to you. Because when you're sitting at home by yourself and you're making a choice on a decision to go on a date, to purchase a new car, to take a job, it's you making that choice and that decision based upon your gut, based upon your heart, and based upon your head. So if you're not feeling it, you're going to make the wrong choice and the wrong decision. So what I do is I force myself to feel now. So I, I'm not waiting for my money to show up before I feel wealthy. I force myself to feel wealthy. Now, during the class, we're going to break down the implementation. As I've been saying for years, knowledge is free. Imp implementation is not. So I just give out a lot of information. That's why I do all the shows that a lot of my upline don't understand why. But the more I do it, and every time I think about changing it, I realize that, no, because of the knowledge, you can't really do anything with it unless the knowledge is inspirational. Then if it's inspirational, then that means I will be able to, with your permission, to influence. If I can influence, that means that now you and I together, or you by yourself, can implement it. So I start charging for stage four. The first three stages are really free. Anybody can give you information. Anybody can motivate, give you motivation or inspiration. Anybody can influence you. But very few people can give you the, as we talked about earlier today, 
a step-by-step system that's based upon your purpose, that has principles, process, procedure, product, profit, prosperity, and peace. All of it starts with documentation. So a system is when you document your purpose and you put it on paper, or you put it in a book, or you put it in a recipe, or you put it in hair, dance, however you choose to express yourself. There's many different ways of expression. I just choose to write and to verbalize. You may choose another form of expression. Maybe you want to build a house. Maybe you want to repair a vehicle. Everybody gets to choose how they want to express themselves. But a lot of people express themselves, but they don't document it. So unless it's documented, it cannot be implemented. And so the problem that when I talk to people, they don't have a system. So they don't have a system in place. There's nothing that they can, again, duplicate or delegate. So if, you, if it's not documented, it's not going to be implemented by you or anybody else. That's what the, in the Bible it says, take the vision, write it down, so that those that read it can run with it. So reading it is the result of writing. What you write, you can read it. So everything starts with the proper documentation. So the way that I control my feelings is with documentation, because documentation empowers or leads to implementation. So you can't implement shit that you have not documented. You personally. So that's why I've got shit written out of the wall. And that's why I write, write in my own hand. I don't, I don't type it. Because you must perform the ritual yourself. Writing is a ritual. It's a loss. That's why they don't want you to write. They want you to use technology. Because then the, the power goes to the tech god instead of going to you. So that's why people get tired. That's why they get confused, lost. They don't know what to do every day. So I have a step-by-step system that I've been using for 25 years, regardless of what it produces, because the documentation and the implementation leads to duplication, meaning that I can repeat it. I have a repeatable process. Even though it may not be working today, it's going to work tomorrow. So that's why I did the credit fuse. So I've set up the credit aspect of my life so I can live, if needed, off credit anywhere from six months to a year with no income. So that way I'm able to weather the storm when we have the highs and lows. Because there are some months when you generate more capital than there are months when you don't. Well, you can have a savings account or you can have access to, you know, six credit cards, each one of them five grand. Let's say your monthly expenses is five grand. That means you, you're covered for six months. You just use your cards to pay your bills. And then when it comes time to pay back those cards, because you just pay the minimum until you start generating capital, because you got a system in place and you're able to automate that system so that way you can delegate, which frees up your time to think. You need more frequent intense thinking and frequent intense teaching. If you get the thinking and the teaching, my brothers and sisters, that frees up and that gives you the time. So I have a lot of time to think because I teach. And your job, because remember, perfection seeks expression. That's how you know you are on track. If you have difficulty expressing yourself, that means that you have not perfected the self. That means that you're still suffering from, you know, the inability to accept the self. That self-acceptance is money. I know no guru, to that term, wealthy individual that has a low self-image. Even if it's like, even if it's a Sasha Fierce. Sasha Fierce may have high self-esteem. Maybe Beyonce don't. So she switches gears to go into a character that can take the stage and demand because of confidence. So if you don't have a Sasha Fierce, you better go, you might want to go make a deal with the devil. I don't recommend it. Shit. I just recommend you be Sasha Fierce. Why, why do you need a double? But, hey, to each his own. 
So somebody has to have confidence. So if you can't get it, you should buy it from somebody. Otherwise, you're going to be broke. Because money follows confidence. Confidence comes from competence. But competency comes from consciousness. Consciousness comes from clarity. Clarity comes from, comes from charity. So those are seven C's that we talk about pretty much on every show. And it's interesting because I've been doing this for 20 plus years. And I know people who come and go, you know, bounce in and out. But there's no change. There's no growth. There's no development. And it's not because of, you know, we can say whatever, but at the end of the day, it's one problem. Lack of self-acceptance. So we got to be somebody else. If you don't love yourself, remember, if you don't love yourself, then you don't take care of yourself. That's why you can wait 315. So that's why you can, you know, sit at home every day and watch Love and Hip Hop. That's why it's easy to drink and smoke and do drugs to defile the body. You don't fucking love yourself. So fuck yourself. You would rather hang out and be, not you personally, of course. So there are people who would rather be and hang out with other people. Me? I tell you guys I did on my birthday. And I tell you guys the story. And the wife had this big, my kids had this big old plan and this big party. Everything fell through. People started getting sick. I just watched it unfold because I ordered a long time. People did not respect my wishes. So I overwrote theirs with mine because my disposition, I was, I don't want this show. This is the W. Archer show. That means I don't do shit that I don't want to do. I recommend that you write your own script too. And just watch the universe bring to you what you command. But see, you wishing and hoping and pondering and praying. That shit doesn't do fuck when it comes to manifesting. Now, if you want T.D. Jakes to work for you, keep doing what you're doing. If you want Jesus to do it for you, keep doing what you're doing. Not you personally, of course, but you know, people you know. Because we've got to be for real now. Because remember, this is, we're in a stage where now, the middle class is gone. That's just rich and poor. So you got to choose between peasant and priest. you got to choose between being a bee and a fly. Fly like flies eat shit. Bees eat honey. Both of them, nobody's better. They're just different. Because flies are designed. Buzzards, they don't hunt and they don't kill. Eagles will never eat a carcass that they didn't kill. So you get to choose. Now, if you're an eagle, you can't get pissed off at the buzzard. If you're a buzzard, you can't get pissed off at the eagle. Because we have epigenetics. We have an animated principle that we get to choose how it, how it manifests on this dimension. So if I choose to drive a convertible Corvette and you choose to take the bus, don't get pissed off at me because I put in the work. If I get to choose, if I, if I choose to live in a nice house and you choose to live in an apartment, don't get pissed off at me. Because you chose to live in an apartment, and I chose to live in a house. Everybody gets to choose ye this day whom ye will serve. It's done unto you as you believe. This shit's in your Bible. But the Bible people are the ones that pissed off because you're living better than them. And you, you know, doing me like me. You ain't got no morality, you dropping the F-bombs, and you living your best life. So they can't figure it out. Because you violate every scripture that they, that they ad, ad, adhere to. Because those scriptures are scripts written by men. That means you can write your own. Because you are a man or a woman. Because if I shoot your reverend, he gonna bleed. Just like if I shoot you. They put their pants on one leg at a time. There is nobody that's better than you. The bee is not better than the fly. The fly is not better than the bee. They are just different desires. Since we get to choose how we express our desire by epigenetics, which simply means epi means on top or above. That means my genes will change their expression based upon my thoughts and my thinking. So if I change my thoughts to one of, how should we think then, Doc, since you're, you're the mastermind? Well, let me tell you what I do. So every morning I wake up, 
I ask myself, self, how are we feeling today? I'm not going to wait until I'm a millionaire to feel abundance. Fuck that. I'm going to feel abundance now. So every day, I wake up, I feel like a multi-millionaire. I don't give a fuck what's in my bank account. The bank account aligns to my disposition. Now, that's tough because that's violent. That's, that's what faith is. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. So you should have evidence even though you can't see. I should, you should have mental. You should be the mental equivalent of, the, of your desire fulfilled. So whatever the end game is, because that's the series that we start tomorrow, it's the how to package your unconscious knowledge into a step-by-step system, which is how to create and live in your desire fulfilled state. That means, how do you really act as if so that way I can feel it when I see you at Walmart? I could see you get off the bus and see you walk into your local grocery store and you exuding wealth, health, wisdom, and great relationship, and your ass is single, broke, and you got an incurable disease. Yet your energy says, I'm a god on earth. How is that done? So tomorrow we break down the implementation of this information. Because you should be empowering not only yourself, but everybody else. Now, remember the people that don't want to be empowered, though. They're going to have a problem with your energy. So, I don't want you to wait for a new relationship. I want you to feel whatever it would feel like now if you want a new relationship. You should feel loved, cared for, respected, cherished. Because if you feel it now, bam, that creates the feel. The feel creates what is real. So if you think about it, poverty is a lack of feeling abundance. Poverty is not a lack of money. Poverty is a lack of feeling. Sickness is a lack of feeling health. It's not a disease. It's a lack of a feeling. It's really interesting when you look at the metaphysics and the science behind this reality. Because this reality is a, is a field. It's a biological, it's a, it's a, it's an electrical magnetic projection. It's really interesting that the brain can't tell the difference between fact and fiction. So if the brain can't tell the difference, the brain just amplifies what's presented to it repeatedly with the most belief. So if there's something, if there's something that is frequently repeated with an emotional response, if it's frequent, intense, Teachings that creates frequent, intense thinking. And that allows you to control the field. So everything is based upon you. So if you think about it, again, poverty is crazy because people will live their entire lives waiting for something outside of them to change how they feel inside. So if you are not creating a new life for yourself right now, then you are not applying the principles of the life management system and what I've been teaching for 25 years. And that is focus, discipline, and order. You should focus on facts, 
that's based upon attributes and characteristics that we call letters and numbers. Because if you focus, if you discipline, your life will structure and order because as we know, because remember, we've been doing this for a while, so you and I, we, we know that we bring about what we think about. So my focus creates my feelings. My feelings create my field. My field creates what is real. So everything goes back to focus. So structured thought, structure of the letters, because remember, symbols create waves. That's why we have symbols. What are symbols? Everything in the world that we live in is a shape. So shape create the waves. The waves create the particles. So your particle that used to be a wave that's based upon a specific expression. And that just simply means that your function, the way that you function, is based upon a symbol or a sigil. And so it is symbols and sigils. This gets back into sigil magic, which is what we call letters and numbers. So your job is to understand that you have the right by manifest you have the right to manifestation or manifest destiny. You don't have the right to manifest your destiny. All you have to do is keep all of your manifestations in line with your design, your dreams, your desires. That just simply means whenever you think or whatever you think about, you're going to bring about it. So why would you think, even if you are poor, why would you think that you're poor? Since the brain doesn't care if you're poor or not, the brain just gives you what you think. Why would you allow yourself to have a thought, to have a feeling, any thought, any feeling other than wealth? I mean, I'm asking for a friend. Because there are people who have thoughts. Now remember, you are not your thoughts. You have them. Then you bring them into captivity, and you can manifest them more. You don't have to manifest them. So, since we understand the metaphysics now of physically feeling unified with our source, the Paroma of Peru, which is what the last years, now I can live with my desire fulfilled. I can live now in a state of a specific end result. And that's what the class tomorrow is, is all about. Tomorrow we break down the biofield energy management class where we teach you the seven keys of information, inspiration, influence, implementation, transformation, manifestation, duplication. That's how you control the bioplasmic light energy field. That's you, your aura. So my brain does not care what I, what biological field that I want to maintain. My brain just says, based upon a specific subject, it will give me a specific process that will give me a specific result. I just need that specific subject. Since I don't have it, again, I do, but let's say I don't, then I can't get that process. And remember what we said, the universe is based upon process improvement, or what we call systems. So everybody has the same part. They don't have a system that's theirs. And you got a system, but it's not yours. You got a system from TD Jakes, Scruffle Dollar, Joel Osteen, from your Reverend Dr. Bishop. You watched the YouTube video. You went to Harvard, the other person. You got a system. But it has nothing, it ain't got shit to do with the attributes and characteristics of your DNA. So therefore, you can do it. You can make a lot of money. You can live the dream, but you will be fucking tired. You'll be angry. You'll be pissed off. You'll be a part of this system because you're using this harmonious arrangement, which is based upon what, what I would call systematic racism, which simply means that built in assistance or privilege for certain blood types, certain height, certain weight, certain color. Now, if you fit in to the vocal and visual frame that's established by the dominant culture, Shit, boo-boo, you should get off this call and you should do dominant culture shit. 
Express if you want to do it. Why? The system is built for you, bro. You can go to the bank. They're not going to do what they, they're not going to red you. They're not going to do you what they did to me. They're not going to want to see how you spend your money. They don't know, they don't want, they're not going to want to get you to go to the bank and have the bank verify your deposits. They're not going to do what I just went through for the last two years to purchase this home because I'm self-employed. They will believe your, your statements and your, they will not need a recording document from the IRS to prove your income tax returns. They, they have, no, you don't have to do that if you're dominant culture. Because my neighbor didn't do it. He's dominant culture. I, I went over there talk to him. And, hey, man, when you bought your house, we both bought a house in the same builder. We started off with the same lender. But the reason I left that particular lender was because of, he said, well, shit, they didn't ask me that. I said, for real? We both veterans. We both went through what's called what Veteran United. They do VA loans for the for veterans and blah, blah, blah. But my other lady to the, to the night, to the right of us, they're black. I haven't seen them in two, uh, about a month, a little over a month now. They was having the same problem. There's five black folks in this area. So far, we're the only one moved in. All the rest of them, they're having problems with their loan. But all the white folks are just moving right in. It's just a mad bus. Now, if you black shit, you know what I'm talking about. Well, some of y'all. Some of y'all, you know, like my boy Django. That's not safe for another time. What are you saying now? Well, I'm saying you need to recognize the rules of the game. Don't fight it. Learn the rules of the game. Play the game better than they do. That's how, that's how I'm in this house. That's why I'm driving my nice car. So I play the game to win. So I'm going to teach you to play the game to win. That's why I just get the credit cards. So that way everybody can get anywhere from ten to hundred thousand dollars in, 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 in uh, credit cards for your rainy day party. When the diamond of culture squeeze the screws, start playing with the stock market, all of this stuff is, you know, like why are the gas prices so high? Why are the food prices going up? This is man made. So you know what? We all know this is a hell of a dialectic. Create a problem, offer the solution. Everything from the COVID-19 to everything that's happening in this in this particular dis- disposition, this is man-made catastrophes. They're not real. So why are you having an emotional response to fiction? I mean, I'm asking for a friend. So since I know this is nothing but fiction, why am I going to get amped up about the gas prices? I don't care what the gas prices cost or what the gas is. I will always make more than it costs. Period. Why? Well, I got a brain and I got a system. And so my brain, my system, my car is bigger and better than yours. Not you personally, but, you know, because, you know, because most of his guards, he, you know, his arms are too, too short or he, he can't think right or something's wrong because shit doesn't get done, meaning problems don't get solved. So if you've got problems that don't get solved, now it doesn't matter whether they get solved fast or slow, at the end of the game, there are no problems. How come? Because what we said at the beginning of the show. So what did we say at the beginning of the show? Well, I said some crazy stuff at the beginning of the show. Y'all remember what I said? Most people will wait for their wealth to come in externally before they feel wealthy internally. Do you know anybody who does not do that? I'll, 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 I'll pause while, while you ponder the question. Let me ask a question again. Now, I already did it for 50 years. Remember, I didn't read this in the book. This is the primary reason I tell everybody all the time. And I like when people come in to the knowledge of this. It's just... Man... Had a long talk with the wife today. And she was like, damn. All these years, I hate to, you know, say it. I mean, she, didn't, she, she just said that you're right. She had a rough day today. Some people, family members, somebody that you would not think would say 
certain things or seek certain things, said, did, and think those things. But I told her they think. I told her this is my mother. That's a long time ago. But it's just not manifesting, like I'm telling you. My son's out there, we had a family meeting yesterday. All of this shit happened on my birthday, because my birthday was on the 15th. That was, that was the worst birthday I've, ever, I've had in my life. I don't even celebrate the birthdays. But what, what, what happened? Well, like I said, everything that everybody planned to celebrate me when I said I didn't want to celebrate. They said, nope, you got to celebrate. Okay. So you're going to put your guard against my guard. What happens? Everybody's plans failed. Mine manifest. Like it's been happening this, this way in my life and will continue. Because if I do what I'm telling you and I'm begging you, do not wait until you get money to feel wealthy. Do not wait until you get a clean bill of health from a doctor to feel healthy. Do not wait until you walk the stage and get your degree from Harvard, Yale, or Princeton, or Brown to feel intelligent. Do not wait until you meet the girl or the guy of your dreams to feel like you deserve to be in a great relationship, to feel like you deserve to be loved, valued, and respected. Do not wait. So I don't wait. I create those feelings for myself automatically, and I create them artificially. Because the brain don't give a fuck. So why do I? Why do you? I mean, I'm asking for a friend. This is why I do not hang out with Christians. Or most people. When you find me, you usually will find me alone. With me, myself, and I. Just like today, yesterday, tomorrow, every day, pretty much since 13, I've been a one-man pony. One-man operation. Why? Do you know anybody that thinks like me? How do I think? To me, I don't give a fuck about what happens outside of me. I literally don't. Now, I don't recommend this because what's going to happen? Your family and your friends, they're going to take your ass crazy. I've had process service come to my door. I said, yeah, we're here to serve, you know, arrest warrants or this or that. And they'll say, if, they'll say my name. Most of my time, they if they because, see, I got like five different names, legally, because my mom changed my name so many times. Yeah, we're here for Edmund Ross. I don't know him. He doesn't live here. Thank you. Click, because that, that, that's not me. My name is not Edmund. My, my middle name is Edmund. That's not my first name. Click. So what are you saying, God? I'm saying, I don't accept external reality. Now, again, this is not a game. Because when I was doing this, when I was a Christian, this is the 25 years that I had all the repos that we moved 25 times because I was saying it, but I wasn't believing it. Probably like you do. I mean, not you personally, but you know. So this is why I be begging people to get frequent, intense teaching because you're not intense enough. See, I didn't understand. And so this was a conversation that I was having with the wife earlier today, when she was saying, damn, I did not think it took that much. Now she understands. And I did not think people would hate that much. Do you know that people, your family, your friends, don't fucking like you unless you are like them. If you have a thought that says you want to stop being poor, and you want to move up in your economic status, your family's going to be pissed the fuck off. Now, they ain't going to tell you that they're going to sabotage you. Now, I didn't read this in the book. I like to watch people. Like my kids. I tell them to suckers all the time. I just love it. Because life is a great teacher. That's why I got the life management center. So tomorrow, I'm going to tell you how the world works. And you're not going to believe me. Just like when people told me, I didn't believe them. And you're going to say, Doc, all these F-bombs and all this stuff, it doesn't take all of that. Now, I understand, like I tell you, my little rich buddy, who make a million dollars a month, that little month, 
every other word out of his mouth is a curse word. I can't even listen to him. And I like to do it. My boy Dan Pena. I told everybody to watch this video, right? Anybody y'all can watch it? Look him up on YouTube. Can you watch a Dan Pena video from start to finish? It's hard. Why? Because he, he's very insulting. Have you noticed that I start doing that now? I used to hate doing that. I didn't understand. Like, why rich people are so insulting? Because they, they fucking tired of saying the same shit over and over, and nobody's fucking listening. So they purposely are trying to push you away. It ain't an accident. I didn't know until I, until I got money. Now I realize I get tired. Rich people, they didn't know that you are not ready. Not you personally, of course, but you know. So a rich person will purposely push your button just to see if you really want what you say you want because they know you don't. How do they know? They used to be you. I didn't understand that. Now that I'm on the other side of the coin, and I remember I used to be a fly. I remember flies like shit. Bees like honey. Is a, is a, is a bee better than a fly? No. Buzzards, they don't hunt or kill. They just scavenge. God designed them that way. Otherwise, they'd just be dead carcasses all over the place. So buzzards have a fucking purpose. So an eagle can't make fun of a buzzard and say, ha, ha, look at you, you sorry buzzard, you can't hunt with this shit. Just like a fish cannot clown and punk a bird. Because if the bird go into the water, he ain't got no gills, he's going to drown. So a fish could laugh at a bird when it's in his environment. That's what y'all are doing. Everybody I know, they're in the wrong environment. Now, it's not your fault, because you don't know. How do you know what you don't know? How, how do you know? So I was explaining this to the wife, and it was, it was interesting because it's something really simple. High school, uh, homecoming. Family member was commissioned to who does the little, what do they call those things? The mums that they wear to the homecoming. We live in a very affluent part of town. I saw girls that had, I, I mean, I, I couldn't believe it. I mean, I knew it, I mean, because it, it was the same thing last year. Long story short, somebody from a family friend from the hood was commissioned to create a mom for somebody that's not in the hood. So it's like me, as I told you guys before, I drive a $100,000 car back. If I take my $100,000 car back right now to L.A., to Rodeo Drive, my $100,000 car back would look like a fucking tin can next to a freaking Phantom, a Rolls Royce Phantom. Fucking base model, 300000 You can go to Owens County and take my house right now. And this house is huge. But if you take my house to Owens County, count it, put it in some of the houses that I saw when I went to California, this would look like a fucking matchbox. Man, if you don't get... So how do you know that? So if I would have never gotten on a plane and went to California and saw those houses in California, and expanded my consciousness. See, you need to tell me you speaking on shit you know nothing about. What do I mean? Because that's like you never left the hood. I remember first when I first met my wife. She had never left the hood. She grew, grew born and raised. First thing I did when I first met her was I took her to the side of town that I live on, which is the north side of San Antonio. The house that we live in is crazy. When she saw it, when her parents saw it, they were like, whoa, ooh. Ah, oh, it was a mess. We moved out of the house. We moved into this house, and it was garbage. I was thinking about that house that used to be a mansion. Now it was garbage. Perspective, growth, expansion, awareness, consciousness. How the fuck did you know what you don't know? If you never leave the hood and go to Orange County, which is a, supposedly the highest 
freaking zip code in the United States? If I remember, if I remember, because I remember when I looked it up. Go to Oxnard, California. This is the Diane Comas neighborhood. Right, Sister Diane? Guess what I love? Shit, look it up. Google it. Look at the houses over there. You see fucking 10,000 square foot houses built into the size of the mountains. Houses with freaking video yards and shit. Three layers. You can't even see. You don't even know that there's a... Well, the house I went to when I was in California, it had a basement. The ground level, I thought that was the first floor. No, when you walk in, there's a floor underneath it. Then there's a floor above it. They don't build that shit here in Texas. So you think you bought it. I'm thinking I'm going to be driving 100,000 Corvette. Corvette, I'm thinking I'm bowling. But I'm in Texas. Take my black ass to New York, Hollywood, where people over there, and they make what I'm making now. Shit, that's like gas money. See, what kind of, you, what kind of tips does Oprah leave? What about Jay-Z? See, man, let me see y'all understand what I'm saying, because I don't know if y'all understand what I'm saying. I'm saying you need to get out of your hood. You need to expand your consciousness because what you're thinking is fly level. And you are beat. You should be thinking, honey, you're not a brother. You're, you're not a peasant. You're a priest. You're a God and you're a goddess. But you're a God with a reason. So you have not been exposed. I'm trying to expose you to greatness. You say, Doc, I don't want to be great. Well, shit, why not? Because you've never seen it. And then when you see it, you come back and tell everybody else, ooh, I thought great. They're going to say, get the fuck out of here, you arrogant, you cocky, you need to be saved. Are you for the demons? Are you for the devil? Are you lost your salvation? They want you to stay poor with them. They want you to stay poor little Christian because Christians haven't seen God. Because blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. Now, we look at the word cheerful. God loves a cheerful giver. That means a brain full of purpose. That's what it means. Is your brain full of purpose? No, it is not. I mean, not you personally, of course, but you know, because you don't. Well, how can you say that? I, because you can't, you don't feel right now, everybody on this call right now, regardless of how your day went, you should be on the mountaintop with Jesus. Or Buddha, or Muhammad, who the fuck your guru is, or your God. I don't have one of them. But for you people who do, y'all should be up there with that dude. See, I am that dude. So I can't be with the dude without him to do. Ooh, come on, preacher. Y'all get that. You'll get that tomorrow. See, because you worship a dude, that dude got the power. Like it says in the Gospel of Thomas. The Gospel of Thomas says that anything that you worship proceeds you in power. Now, I don't know why you would give your power away. I mean, I'm asking for a friend. Can somebody please tell me why the fuck would you give your power away? That's the only way you get through this world is with power. So you can't have confidence because Jesus got the confidence. You got to go to Jesus. He gets the confidence. Unfortunately, he ain't here. She ain't here. Buddha, Muhammad, none of them motherfuckers here. You here, though. You here. You flesh and blood. You walking around in 3D reality. But you're giving away your power. How do you give away your power? Worship. Now, let me show you understand the game. Because what happens to the brain? What happens to the brain chemistry when you objectify something outside of yourself? It's like having an orgasm. How do you, how do you feel like you're orgasm? Well, you feel depleted. That's why, you're not, that's why the whole semen retention thing and all that stuff is out. No flap. You see that all over the Internet. Back in the old days, men were, before they went to battle, some dudes still do it. They don't have sex. Or they don't have it all yet. Why? Do you know what's inside of semen? Not that you should, but that's a lot of minerals and enzymes in there. A lot. Every time you do a discharge, what happens to the human body? That's not safe for the time, but you should just know it. Not that you should stop doing the discharge, because the brain, the body is going to regenerate. But as we talk about, I'll well, show you guys was the website, moon, uh, was it mootracks.com? Now, all of this is only taught in ancient texts. Because they know if you read Moon Tracks Astrology Canada or Moontracks.com, you would understand the history behind sun ingression. I N G R E S S I N. They don't teach that at Ebenezer Baptist. 
All it simply means is that your quote unquote zodiac sign enters into the moon, enters into a space where the transitioning of energy, frequency, wave, cosmic frequency that activates the Kundalini and the Kundabuffer or the other, remember the show that I did a couple of days ago? There was 45 names for the same thing. You guys remember that? That's just crazy to me. So let me get this right. You call it the Holy Spirit. You may call it the anointing. You may call it Elohim, Eloah. You may call it, you know, Shekinah. You may call it uh, emanation. You may call it radiation. You may call it ether, life force, vital principle. Um, what's another word? Uh, exotic, bio, gravity, tachyon, kundalini, prana, shakta, viral, kai, uh, hashina, baraka, tumo, q, q, grail, uh, waken, w a k e n. All of these, and the last one is biomagnetism or bioplasmic. So we're going to be breaking that down tomorrow. So depending on what part of the country you're in, you think the these fools over in Japan who call it Chi and Q and Kai, that they, they fucking lost. They're going to hell. Not knowing that if you look the shit up, it's the same thing that you're saying, and you're a Christian. It's only one frequency, homie. But they got us all, you know, conjured up. So we don't know ourselves. Number one, we don't know ourselves. So what is the self? Well, you're nothing but what is called subtle energy. So we put that down the bar. You're nothing but an energy source that's connected to a greater energy source. So you're supposed to know that. Now, if you know that, then that leads you to number two. That means that everybody you meet is exactly like you. That means if I hate you, I hate myself. So that knowledge, you, I got no enemies now. Because now I'm smart. So now I avoid conflict. Now I seek a civil resolution between all conflicts. Because now I know if I hate you, I hate myself. Because me and you are the same. Because there's only one frequency. You are just really my mirror. You're just my reflection. So nobody can even talk to you, meet you, unless y'all are vibrations equivalent. So the only way that I know Brother Joseph is because me and Brother Joseph somewhere, in fact, we got the same birthday, that, that could be a little bit of it. But me and, that means me and Brother Joseph, we got the vibration or we got the same verbs in our DNA. Somewhere. Otherwise, we, we wouldn't be connected. I would never meet. Because we can't, we're on different frequencies. So that means that there's no way if I'm a high vibration like keeping on, hey, or dislike, or disrespect, or do anything unethical to Brother Joseph. Because if I'm fucking him, I'm fucking myself. Why would I do that? Why would I shoot myself in the foot? Now, I can go to the hood right now, driving my convertible car back, and there's going to be some Negroes up there looking at me, eyeballing me. Yeah, this nigga don't know where he's at, man. They're going to try to rob me. So when I go to the hood, I'm always passing. Why? I, I can't go to the hood. Negroes are always just for an easy way up. So I go over there praying, run up on me, dog, please. I have no problem putting a bullet in the Negro's head. Why? I don't play. I ain't got time. I'm not going to argue. I'm not going to debate. You're going to hurt me, I'm going to hurt you. It's either kill or be killed. Now, for some people who are not in the game, y'all say, ooh, doc, that's hard. Okay, take your ass to the hood. Get robbed, get raped, get jumped. You be packing too. See, it's crazy, man, that everybody's perspective, they think that's the, y'all think that's the only one. But that's the whole world out here. You, you ever been to the Orient? You know, you've been to Africa? You've been to the Philippines? What about Korea? What about Iran? Why Iraq? Man, it's a whole big world out here. And you see the whole world based, based upon your limited perspective? Come on, man. So if somebody brings a big different perspective and you don't even listen, that's a Christian. That's why I can't talk. I cannot. I, I don't even talk to them anymore. But I can't do ignorant. I can't do stupid. Why? Because that used to be. That's why, that's why rich people curse and don't give a fuck about dumb people. Because they know if you really don't want to be dumb, you're going to start asking questions. Like I told you guys about the show that I did about shadow work. So I know if you're dumb, it's because you want to be. 
Because there's no way, there's too much information. You can Google pretty much anything now. You got a fucking computer in your pocket that gives you access to the universe, and you walk around and don't, you don't, you don't know that there's no way his name could be J. Now, you can call it anything you want, but it, that you can't say that a dude walked around doing that era with that name. Because that never didn't even exist back then. That's a third grade level shit. So if you choose not to believe that, okay, then let me know you isn't. And you want to be, because why you can look the shit up. You're a grown ass man, and you tell me you got a computer in your pocket, call a cell phone, and you don't look up basic stuff that you believe, but you want me to help you. This is why rich people do not hang out with poor people. Poor people are poor because they want to be, not because they are, it's because they watch TV. Because I used to be poor, and I used to watch TV. Instead of doing what? Get out my ass and figure the fuck out. How come I didn't figure it out? I didn't have a system in place. But how come I didn't have a system in place? I didn't want one. Because the moment I wanted one, bam, one appeared. So in conclusion, let me make sure you guys understand why tomorrow's show is so important. Tomorrow's show, like every show that I do, is life-changing. You can change your life by listening to one show. Why? Because every show, I pretty much say the same thing in a different way. What do I say? According to ancient Egypt and every ancient document on the planet, your chakras are spinning volcanoes, basically. I like the word volcano instead of hurricane or vortex. It just simply means that it's an energy center. The human anatomy is an instrument. It is a, you are a musical instrument. As a musical instrument, there are ley lines on the earth that affect your tone or your tune. There are people that affect positively and negatively your tone and your tune. Everywhere you go, things, people, places, and things can affect your integration of the cosmic frequencies that are being emitted or sent by the Picard, the big chief. That just simply means that as a god or a goddess of the sky or newt or nut, that's why when, when guys have sex, one of the ways that when you say when a guy, you know, has an orgasm that he hit that in the hood, they call it, hey, he's having a nut. Where that come from? That comes from Egypt, N-U-T. That is known, that's the god of the underworld. Because why? The genitalia is considered the underworld. So the god of the underworld is over the nut, N-U-T, or nature. It's the god of transition. Resurrection, erection, that's why a man's penis gets hard because of the god and the goddess of overstanding regeneration. Well, that god and that goddess had three siblings. That's where the Trinity is from. Set, Isis, and I forgot the other one. Osiris, I think. And according to Egyptology, we could keep going. But the point is, Anubis, which is the son of one of these knuckleheads that controls um, the halls of Amiki. Well, all of this is talking about the underworld. This is 3D. So all of the knowledge on this planet is for you to master 3D. Fun, fighting, and co-creating. The underworld, the halls of Amiki, Horus, Horus, W-H, Hor. What is a Hor? No, that's somebody that's it's around. Horus. We call him Horus. So the W in front of the H. What about Os? Or what about O Iris? What about Osiris? O S, operating system. I R I S, controls your eye. Iris. Osiris and Horus. The eye of the whore, that's us. We're a horse. What is a whore? A whore is somebody that jumps around from 
teaching it, teaching it, teaching it, teaching it. You sleep around. Mentally, though. It's just mental. It's spiritual. So there's a battle between you staying down here and fun fighting in heaven, or you going up yonder to fight family and finances. The fuck you going to do? Well, you don't even know that the I that makes a whore out of us. What's the I that makes a whore out of us? The underworld. The 13 parts. That's why Osiris, his ass was chopped up into 13 pieces by his wife, supposedly. And, you know, they gathered all these pieces back together, put them together. Y'all know the story. So what what, what, what we got to look at? Well, what is the measurement of the eye of Horus? The eye of Horus is divided into six different parts called, I shouldn't tell you, but I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's spelled H-E-Q-U-A-T. Some text has it H-E-Q-A-T. That, why are you telling me all this? Man, I don't know what the fuck it means. It means why you and Groundhog Day. Where's Groundhog Day? Groundhog Day, like I said, day money all the time. You're going to keep repeating the same shit over and over again for the rest of your life. You will never get out. You're like Westworld. H-E-Q-A-T. It's not even a word. Go to dictionary.com and type it in. So, why does it exist? Well, it's like all of the words. Words are fractions. They are emanations. They are particles. They are small pieces of phonons and photons. There are six fractions that make up what is called the eye of Horus, the pyrenean pan. One of those, we're breaking down, just one. Because if we did all of them, it, it, it hurts the brain a little bit. The, the Q, I, that's how you say it. It's one, three, two, zero. It's one, three hundred and twenty. Three hundred and twenty. So these are fractions of hydro, hydro, hydroglyphics. Hydro and hydroglyphics. So hydro in Egypt on the wall, H-I-E-R-O, was replaced by hydro. We call that water, hydrogen, H-Y-D-R-O. The dominant culture is replacing it with hydra, H-Y-D-R-A. That is what's in the jab, fucking up your DNA. So, the big G sent me and other folk like me who understand etymology and understand how the universe works. Inside of the brain, there's something called a crystal brain. Because there's crystals in the brain that's called magnetite. Well, they are only activated when a certain tone, a certain frequency is activated inside of the brain. Now, a few shows ago, we talked about the chords that are played on a instrument. Specifically, we talked about the guitar. And we talked about if you are a musician, you know that there's five notes on a guitar that matches up exactly with the five frequencies of the human brain. So the brain, you, you're nothing but a vocal image that slow down so that you create a visual image. What does that mean in English? In English, you are what you think. And then the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So what are you saying, Doc? I am saying that your visual image, the only reason I can see you, is because you are a word that became flesh, and now you're walking around. So when the word stops, you stop. So the only reason that you D-Y-E is because you don't have a permanent system in place that turns you into a superconducting magnetic flux quantum energy field. Now, Jesus called that, when he went up on the Mount of Olives, transfiguration. The ability to communicate 
to put your letters into a particular order that provokes a particular response. That stops unnecessary suffering. And it removes the burden that you put on yourself by being over-responsible, especially if you're sick. That just simply means all your problems come from you, you voluntarily burdened yourself. Why did you do that? Well, I did it when I was young. I wanted to start a family because I did not grow up in a family. I, there was a lot of us, but we were spread out. And I wanted unconditional love. When my oldest daughter, Charlene, was born, when she was a baby, the way that she would look at me, bam, I'm like, yep, that's it. That's what I wanted. So I created, and I didn't have a job. I had no way to to provide and protect me. But I wanted love because I didn't get love. So what I unknowingly did was I created things that I could not take care of. So I was an irresponsible creator. So an anti-God is a God that is creating having thoughts, but they can't take care of those thoughts. Those are called feelings. God judges you, if you want to use that term. Amoebas, the underworld, they judge you based upon your ability to manage thoughts. Thoughts are tulpas, T-U-L-P-A. You unknowingly are creating, a, you have a bunch of little thought form beings running around right now. And you are an irresponsible creator. Your job is to create a system from A to B, not A to Z. Your job is to dumb yourself down because right now, what we're doing tomorrow is developing a system for you so you can share with other people to take them from A to B. Fuck Z. You, you're thinking too grandiose. We don't want to do all of that. We don't want to cook a seven course meal. All we want you to do is take the order. You're going to the restaurant, and you not only are you taking the order, you're seating the people, you're fucking doing everybody else's job, and you're just supposed to do A to B. Yeah, somebody else is supposed to go from B to C. Somebody else is going to take them from C to D. Somebody else is going to take them from B to E. But you're trying to come up with a system from A to Z. And so you're overwhelmed, and you feel what's today's message. You're a millionaire already. What's the point of tomorrow's class? To show you. But I showed my daughters. My daughter said she was frustrated. She said, why are you frustrated? Well, I don't want you to tell you. And some other stuff. My son, BJ, was like, Dad, that's why I went to the Navy. Blah, 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 blah. I said, BJ, you know why you went to the Navy? And I told him his numbers again. And he's unsure. He knows that's exactly, and I told Sade the same thing. Sade, this is exactly your specific purpose, based upon your specific purpose. This is what you've been doing since five. I'm your father. I've been watching you since you came out your mama's twat. So I know what the fuck I'm talking about. But they're kids. They got to grow up. They got to learn shit on their own. So I told her exactly what she's supposed to do. Like always, she was shocked. I've been telling my kids the same thing. But like you, they can't believe it. And they over it. You must expose yourself to greatness by dumbing yourself down. Because right now you know too much. You're too smart for your own good. You must become aware of your own wisdom. See... Not everybody wants to win. This is the hardest thing. This is the conversation today that my wife was having in tears. And she could not understand why people do not want to win and why they don't like her because she went. I told her this when I met her. I told her when I met her, I was, I was, you know, I was broke and homeless. I, I remember, I mean, you guys remember the story. 
I moved in with her because I was behind on my rent. She put me on her phone bill. She was paying my phone bill. I had a job, but I was on skid row. Child support was taking all my money. They didn't have to take it. Remember, I was never placed on child support. I put myself and sit before I paid anything because I never wanted my children to be without. Even though it wasn't enough, five kids, no matter how much money you're making, it ain't enough. What's the point, Doc? Point is, I told my wife what I was feeling when I met her. The same thing I'm telling you tonight. What are you telling me tonight, Doc? I need to be crystal clear what the fuck you're saying. I'm telling you to stop feeling the shit you're feeling. So what am I supposed to feel, Doc? You're supposed to feel wealthy without money. You're supposed to feel healthy. I don't give a fuck what the doctor said. You're supposed to feel wise. I don't give a shit if you're a functional literate. And you're supposed to feel like you are married if you want to be or single if you want to be. Whatever type of relationship you want to be in, I don't know. I ain't your business. Maybe, you want, maybe you're into the same sex shit. I don't care. Well, hey, you do you, boo, because I'm going to do me. All I'm saying is you, you have feelings that's not in line with your design. Until you make the unconscious conscious, you're going to be broke. Writing is an unconscious skill. You can write, you ain't got to think. Driving, brushing your teeth, combing your hair, fixing breakfast, you do all that shit automatically. Teach that. That's where you start. Where do you start? Tomorrow, what do you do tomorrow? Tomorrow, you need to start sharing your share. That means you need to start feeling like a million dollars now. Why should I feel like a million dollars now? Because the brain must draw to you the vibrational equivalent of your feelings. <whistles> Boy, when I figured this out, I never allowed myself to feel anything except my name. I don't know what the fuck was going on in my life. If you do some research on music theory, especially if you're not taking the class tomorrow, the burden of responsibility is on you. It's not on me. It's not on your mama. It's not on your daddy. It's not on Joe Biden, even though you think the government's going to take care of you. It's not you personally, of course, but you know, people out there believe that somebody else is supposed to do for them what they should do for themselves. So unfortunately, E-A-D-G-B, you should Google it. Especially if you're not taking the class tomorrow. Blue, green, yellow, orange, red. Those are the only brain waves that exist on this frequency. Energy is a musical wave. Energy is nothing but a musical note. But a musical note is a node in the body, you know, you know which we break down tomorrow. So your job is to activate the nodes, you know, the E. With your N O T E. That puts you in eternity. That is how you protect your energy, your money, and your time. So, nobody, I cannot lose energy, I cannot lose money, and I cannot lose time because I am protected. How am I protected? I place the burden of responsibility totally on me. I removed all of my unresolved emotional conflict. I simply wrote down my feelings on a piece of paper. I took that piece of paper, crumbled it up, threw it in a trash can. That was a symbol of my energy cleansing. Now, you can do yoga. There's a lot of different ways to cleanse any energy or emotional blocks. Some people say to burn the paper. You can do that too. Whatever your gut tells you, my gut told me to simply bring it to my remembrance. Accept responsibility for it, meaning own it. I accept, I said, everything that happened to me that I can remember, I said it was my fault. I owned it. Even if it wasn't. My father never told me, son, I love you. That was my fault. The lady that used to beat me when I was a child, my fault. Every the person that was that that freaking fondled me and molested me when I was a little boy, my fault. Now your therapist and everybody on the planet will tell you 
don't do that. That means you can never heal yourself. So don't do it. You be, you be walking around carrying that shit for the rest of your fucking life. Now, just like when my daughter Shamura died, and everybody told me to grieve. Fuck that. Nothing wrong with grieving. I just want to know how much money you get paid to do it. See, I'm just, I'm a real dude. I'm not one of these niggas that you play chess with uh, checkers. I don't play chess or checkers. I ain't got time. Now, I'm not getting something wrong with it. It's a great strategy. But my strategy is life. I play the game of life. Real life. This is not a game for me. Real life. Niggas die. You run up on me and boo, you might be shot. Why? Real life. I play the game of life at the highest fucking level. That's what I do. So, no, I ain't got time to watch Love and Hip Hop in the basketball watch. Mm -mm. Why? I'm living my life at the highest level. I'm killing demons and devils. I'm cleansing my soul. I'm doing the soul work. I'm working on W.E. Rogers. I'm getting my shit together. So I ain't got fucking time to deal with nobody else. Now, anybody else that want to work while I'm working, I'm going across the street. I'm going on the mountaintop. I'm a millionaire. Anybody else want to be one? Shit, let's go. I'm healthy. Anybody else want to be healthy? Shit, just up a board. As I'm learning, I'm sharing. Every day. So, perfection, the Bible says, be ye perfect, because I am perfect. It says, be ye perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. So, my perfection doesn't come from me, it comes from him, if you want to use that term. So, what does that mean? That means I'm already perfect, right? And then, so, I ain't fixing shit. I ain't changed for no mother. What does that mean? So, that means I wake up every day and say, I'm going to fuck with nobody else thinks. I'm the shit. So, my, my brain says, okay, the nigga says he's the shit. Let's make him the shit. And so, the brain brings to me stuff. That verifies my disposition. So no, I don't wait till I get paid to feel like I got paid. Boo, I get paid when I wake up every morning at 8, or 9, or 11, or 5, or whatever I fucking want. Because I write the script. So I get paid every day. How? I just got paid. So I wake up in the morning with a fat check. So since my brain... There's no difference between fiction and reality. It just brings to me anything that I focus on with enough intensity, the brain is going to manifest it. So once again, the one billion dollar question that I have for you, since you can have what you say, why the fuck would you say anything else that you don't want? I'm just asking, why would you have a thought? Why would you hold something in your head that you do not want to manifest in your hands. That's my only question I got for you. I want you to think, man. Why would you hold a thought in your head? I don't care what the thought is. It could be real. I'm talking about is that I've, there's been real thought. But I don't want to hold it. That's, 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 I'm not saying that the thought is not real. So I'm not saying that you walk through life like, shit, you know, it's just not real. No, I know it's real. But I'm saying I have a financial belief system that says I will manage my own debt. And I have an abundance mindset. That means money flows to me easily and effortlessly from all directions. So I don't give a fuck about poverty or scarcity. When I see the glass is half full, everybody that see the glass is half empty. I do not allow myself to see glass is half empty. I don't allow it. Since I don't allow it, my brain doesn't bring it. So every time I see what you call a problem, I see an idea. I see an opportunity. And all I'm thinking, my brain says, manifest something once, get paid for life. That's all my brain tells me every day. Every day I wake up to the day, my brain says, what the fuck are you going to create this day that you can get paid for tomorrow? Next year, and for the rest of your life, even when you're gone, your children still can get paid. So my brain said, hey, write another book. Do another audio show. Why? You, you create that once. That's residual income. So take information. Make it inspirational. Make it very influenceable. Write it so that it influences people. 
Tell people how to implement the information. That's going to bring about a transformation. That transformation then will bring about a manifestation. Once they get the manifestation, they will want to do duplication. When they see the system and how it works, they say, shit, let's do this again, Doc. I created one book, shit, let's write another one. I got one website up and running, so all I do every day, which is what I'm begging you to do every day, wake up, create a system. How do you create a system? How do you brush your teeth? Can you document that shit for me? Yeah, I'm telling you, this is what I do. All I do is document. What do I do? Let me just write it the fuck down. What does that mean? Take out your video camera. Make a TikTok video. How do you, how do you comb your hair? How do you dye your hair? How do you grow your hair? How do you braid your hair? How do you do your makeup? How do you do your nails? How do you shop? Little shit. See, y'all think it's too big. The magic of thinking little. Remember, the smaller the niche, the faster you get rich. So stop thinking so grandiose. Stop trying to save the fucking world. And start with teaching me how to freaking clip my toenails. See, if you get really, really small, you get really, really big. Mental energy that solves specific issues. Bam, that's how you blow up. Once you create that system, once you document it, that's the hard part. The hard part is actually documenting it. Writing it down. Remember, you don't got to write no more. You can do speak to text, just like I'm doing right now. Like I do pretty much every day. As I talk, words are popping up on my screen. And you got, they got free, I mean, I mean, there's so many different websites and stuff that does it now. It's, there's thousands of different ways to do this. All I'm saying is, as you talk, words should pop up on the screen. Bam! That is your system. Now we got your system. What do we do next, Doc? Well, we got to take your system because it's yours. That's why it works. You got to feel that system. You take that system that you feel because your energy is in that system. And now you start to automate. Now, automate, you can use tech. You can do what I do. You can do it yourself. My automation is still archaic. However you choose to automate, because automate is animated. The number two is the most important. As we said in the first show, animation, you have to think what makes a man's penis get erect. Whatever you have, whatever, however you did, if I ask everybody to document in your brain, how does a man have an erection? Then your product should do the same thing for your customer. Whatever causes a man, some men are visual, some men are physical, some men, I don't know, maybe some men like smells. Shit, I don't know. There's some kinky fools out here today. So, however, your client, remember, know yourself, know your client, know your design. Because once you automate, you animate. So, if you, what if you can't assist, I guess is the right word, your man with getting it up? We'll put it that way. Ladies, you should be able to assist. It, Men might need assistance. So you should have a skill set that can assist if he needs assistance. Because some of your customers need assistance. So you should be able to document that process that leads to the animation. Because guess what? Everybody wants that duplication. That's why, uh, what do they call it? Um, um, Viagra is out. Why? It helps men get animated. That's why they what? They sell a lot of it. That sells. So what's that process? You need a system. That system it needs to be automated or animated. Whatever the system is, you have to document it. That's called an incantation. An incantation means you're going to put your words into a particular order. So you can say, right, ladies, a man can walk up to you and say, Yo, what's up? Children, fine, big baby. You want to come hang out with me at the crib? You know what I'm saying? You can kick it. 
Ladies, did that do anything? Or a man could walk up to you and say, damn, you one beautiful woman. I don't know if you have, and I don't want to be disrespectful. I don't see a ring on your finger, so that's the only reason why I told you. I just want to let you know, I saw you, I was sitting over here, and I saw you standing over there, and I just want to tell you, damn, I just saw you sitting over there, and you are fucking beautiful. My name is Jeff. What's yours? That's a little better than, yo, what's up, just go over and kick it. In other words, now even that's kind of weak, but if you can articulate, if you can document whatever your specific knowledge is that animates, make my blood start to get my heart to do, 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 animate, I'm going to duplicate. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm going to implement that. Whatever you document it, shit, I'm going to implement it. Why would I implement it? Because the way that you said it, or the way that you painted it, or the way that you cooked it, or the way what the way that you the way that you did it, that shit animated me. Man. So yes, I'm gonna implement it. I'm gonna eat it. I'm gonna buy it, and then I'm gonna tell everybody that I'm gonna duplicate it. So tomorrow we're gonna break down the three step process by breaking down into the five steps to make sure that everybody's crystal clear. First of all, on um, your specific subject, the most important thing you should be able to vocalize right now, at least for 30 minutes, your motivated ability subject. I should unmute your mic, and I should say, Sister Diane Coleman, you up. And Sister Diane should be able to start talking nonstop for 30 minutes, easy, with no pause except for... <clears throat> And then I'm, after 30 minutes, I have to interrupt and say, okay, okay, Sister Diane, okay, we got it. Thank you very much. We know that you love walking on the beaches in Oxnard, California, you know, getting some sun, some earthing, gardening. So Sister Diane should be able to talk nonstop about the thing, her motivated ability subject. So that's where we start because that's where we end. You start at the end. So Sister Diane and everybody on this call must be able to paint a picture for me in my fucking head like I'm from Mars about your desired end. What's your dream life? When you are lying or walking around and you're ready to transition to the next level, you go up on the mountaintop like Moses and you are 175, 200, 300 years old, and it's time for you to go on up yonder? What's your legacy? What have you done? Can you write down what does your life look like right before you die? What have you accomplished? Oh, man. Y'all got a couple of hours? Because I can tell you mine. Shit, I can see it. Can you see it? I can. I love you. Appreciate you. We'll see you back tomorrow in class. Remember, if you haven't made the payment yet, just go to the website. I love you. Appreciate you. God bless.